What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Collider Studio presented by Saratoga Spring Water. This is my very first interview of Sundance 2023, and I'm so excited to be kicking it off with the team behind Birth Rebirth. God, oh my God, you're moving. These are the kind of big swings and themes and other elements of the movie that we're going to get into that I really love to talk about and explore. But Right now, a lot of people out there won't know what your movie is about. I'm going to have to give you these duties. You're going to do this a lot while you're here. Oh, Can you give everyone a brief synopsis of Birth Rebirth? Um, it's a Frankenstein-inspired uh, story about motherhood um, and grief, I think, and uh, co-parenting a reanimated child. Job well done. <laughs> there's, there's so many things to explore within that, though. Um, first feature here it's a really big deal to select the right story for your first feature so why did this particular idea and these themes feel like they paired well for you to take that plunge with this idea has been sort of in my mind in one form or another since I was like 13 and I first read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein so it wasn't actually the first feature that I that I wrote and uh but it's been sort of gestating for the longest time um so to speak and it's it's definitely I feel like every phase of my life where I've come back to it, it it's been infused with sort of the, the fears and anxieties of that phase. Um, and this felt like the moment for it to all come out. I have so many follow-ups. First, if you've been thinking about it for that long, what would you say is the biggest difference between how you first pictured the film when you first envisioned it in full mm -hmm. and what we see in the final feature now? Well, there's a lot of, um, you know, I think we described it as sort of the horror of having a body. Um, you know, there's there's that it's body horror, but in a in a sort of different way. Um, and I, you know, I was literally going through puberty when I started thinking about Frankenstein and a, a female Doctor Frankenstein and using the processes of her body to create something with her mind. So that was really at the forefront of of the project when I started thinking about it. And then you know, when I was in my mid 30s and it was really coming to fruition everyone in my life was talking about parenthood you know having a child with your body having a child another way choosing not to have a child that choice being made for you it was just it was just on every, i mean my, my mind but everybody's mind in my life and so it really became a, a core part of the film all right so now for my cast here again this is a first feature you are all very busy and i imagine it can feel like you know a bit of a risk to jump in with a first time feature filmmaker and know that they're the right person to helm the project so why did laura feel like one the right helmer for this particular story but also like a potentially good collaborator for the way the three of you like to work um you know i had a very long zoom with Laura, I don't know if you were aware of the pandemic that we are still Never going through, <laughs> but um, that was when we met, was on a very long Zoom. And uh, I think one of the things that emerged during that time was sometimes the vulnerability was uh, right on the surface. So I feel like we bonded immediately. And I remember actually right after that meeting saying like, I don't know if you want me to do this thing, I love it, but I feel like we're friends forever at the very least because we really had a had a deep bond during that moment and the other thing I would say is I watched everything that Laura made that I could get my hands on and it all blew me away so that was for me I I felt like I could trust them with my life like especially something this complicated and this kind of unique tonally besides the fact that it was just written I mean a spectacular script besides that I felt like once I saw uh, these pieces. Friday was incredible. Um, Porn Without Sex, classic. <laughs> Truly amazing. Have you seen that? No. Oh my you God. You haven't seen my porn? <laughs> no. Porn Without Sex? It's the best thing. So sad. That I actually that. might have been the real clincher. Friday is spectacular, but Porn Without Sex, I was like, there we are. There, there it is. Yeah. But no, I was like, this, this person knows exactly what they're doing. And, uh, and also just, they're fun. Funny, great. It's just felt like warm family. all the right keywords right there <laughs> she said warm um i i don't think my uh, experience was as deep as yours um uh, i got a call from my reps and said um there's a script that the uh, the writer director wrote with you in mind i was like what so my ego clicked 
And then I read it and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I read it a few times. Um, um, you know, our, our circumstances are minimal and risky, especially as women in film. So I was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. And, you know, we all agreed that it was powerful. I had my husband read it. Um, and there was so much in it to do that I think as um, artists, you don't often get to do in one project. You know, so much to explore, so much, so much to risk, so much to regret. You know, even when you watch it, you get consumed with your work, and the, but uh, uh, then you get distracted by how good everybody else is. And that's the best film to be a part of. This was a very kismet, I mean, I, I talked about it last night a little bit, but um, I feel like I was in my kitchen breastfeeding my child. And I looked down at my beautiful, darling child's face and was like, I wonder if she would just like bite down right now. <laughs> And I was like, she had no teeth, but there was something horrifying about the moment. And the the process of motherhood vacillates wildly between body horror and extreme elated, like, like cosmic appreciation for life. And I felt like this overwhelming feeling that our film canon does not have movies that are, talk about this experience and you know spoiler alert we all come into the world <laughs> through this path um or out this path um and so i was just uh, overwhelmed with the feeling of like missing all the women from the 70s who would have made crazy weird psychotic batshit stuff about pregnancy birth making life, forming life, and then the horror of keeping that life alive. Keeping a baby alive is absolutely frightening. And so, you know, I had been through death before that, and so death is frightening, but this was like, I was like, why? Why isn't there like 50, 100 movies? Like, this should be a main topic of films, you know, of women giving birth. And then all of a sudden, I get Laura's, I get Laura's script, and I'm like, Oh, here it is. Oh my God, like ask and you shall receive. <laughs> and I was, couldn't have been more excited about participating in this film, being a part of it, supporting it, being here at Sundance and supporting it. It's the perfect place for it. And it's just this like, I'm like, oh man, if I could watch like 10 more horror, I'm like, where's the Marvel horror movie about? <laughs> Give it to Laura. Mar I would watch that too. Right? <laughs> Yet again, many follow-up. I'm not even going to any of the planned questions I had, and I'm going to be rushing to squeeze everything in in the end. Um, Judy, you just brought up the idea that this role was written for you. Can you both speak a little bit to writing a role for an actor, then finally getting the opportunity to give that role to the actor, and then maybe how that role changed at that point? Oh, yeah, it was terrifying. Um, you know, I, I was, I'm a big fan of Judy's for a long, long time. Um, I actually saw a film that played at Sundance, I believe, Gun Hill Road, um, in, in which she was incredible. And it was around the time that this script was coalescing that I saw the film and I was just like, that's silly. Oh my God, that's silly. Um, and it, every subsequent draft, I just had Judy in mind. So then when I, when I was getting on a Zoom with Judy, I was like, oh, I don't, don't screw it up. Oh my God, <laughs> you know, it was very, very intense. I was like, be normal. I was, <laughs> it was, but you know, we sort of immediately bonded and, uh, yeah, I mean, you brought everything I thought you would to the role and then just more. It just, I, to, to me watching you, it felt like a glove. Um, and it was a real pleasure. All right. <laughs> I, I felt the same way. I was terrified. Uh, you always, I, I think for me as an actor, I always want to know what the right questions to ask are. I always want to go past that certain place, like, you know, and instead of just kind of like letting it uh, fall into place, which is exactly what, what she did. Um, so flattered and un under pressure for being the person in mind for the film and yet um, feeling the fit when you read it is a true, a true gift. And we were able to explore and discuss and try different things um, uh, uh, that were rewarding. It, it, uh, Laura built an environment that I, we will not stop talking about, um, how it all begins behind the camera. Um, and the only reason we're all four here is because it has to. It's a film made by and for women and in front of the camera with women. We had like uh, uh, about, uh, we would say 75% women on the set, queer, diverse, and um, that fits like a glove. You feel safe, you feel comfortable. Um, you don't feel 
Well, you do feel nervous about uh, uh, complaining about something that's not working for you, but you know that you're doing it for the film, for the role, because it means something to you and because you're representing that for everybody who's around. And that's why like a lot of the crew showed up yesterday, which is completely rewarding, you know? And, uh, and, and you just feel like yeah, you wanna see what you are a part of, that there's no way in one, uh, there's one way or another is gonna be rewarding to you as an artist. I want to keep you guys here forever. Can you give me an example of a time when you didn't necessarily, I mean, not, I don't want to use the word complain, but you raised a concern about something, it was heard, and something changed for the better? It, it, immediately. And it was a behind the scenes issue um, a, 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 with housing uh, and, and stuff or accommodating on a day where it was emotionally taxing. So, um, but uh, that's a position of leadership, I think, that you have to take. In order for, uh, because what happened, if you, what my experience in over 20 years of TV and some film, um, you, you sit on it and then you spend days bitching about something that you could have at least said something about. And you do it for the benefit of your performance first and for the benefit of what they're trying to realize for you in the film instead of walking around uh, un um, inappropriately grateful for being there when you're there to become a part of it. It's also something I think uh, as uh, women in this business, I also feel like sometimes I hesitate in different atmospheres, especially when it's primarily a male dominated atmosphere, because I worry that I'll be perceived a certain way as a woman complaining. So uh, it, it makes a difference, the atmosphere that you're in when you feel like you'll be heard. Build, um, building on the idea of the importance of the crew that you've assembled here. I'll preface this by saying everybody involved in the making of this film is very important, but I do like asking this just so we could learn more names of artists that we aren't necessarily, you know, seeing in front of a camera as often. But can each of you name one behind the scenes unsung hero that changed your experience on this movie for the better that you want our audience to know about? Our DP. Uh, Ja, I'm not Chananan, <laughs> yeah, Chananan Chotrung Road. Um, Say that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> um, last night, the, the weird thing about participating as an actor in a project is like, there's so much that happens after we leave. Right. <laughs> and on set, you, you can look like at dailies and you can sort of see the screen. Sometimes you can see what's going on. But she, I was blown away last night. I mean, the attention to detail she had some shots in this movie that like uh there's a shot where your eye is lit like it's glowing one eye and i was like this is so weird and like <laughs> i've never seen that on film and she like like literally like backlit your eyeball which i don't even understand how that's done and i'll tell you when we were looking at your your oh, i can't tell you your the the thing the thing in the yeah uh and i i saw my re uh, staring at it and my reflection in it. Oh wow. And I didn't I never really noticed that before. And it was just like a, a brilliant detail. And because, you know, of our limited accommodations, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you can no, put this in. Um uh, uh uh Jaya had to get really, really creative with and and it was such an intimately shot so film and so she fast. She was working so fast. I don't know how she did all the I mean, you all did it as well. It wasn't just like, you know, but yeah. How the, those kind yeah. of shots were assembled so quickly. Mm -hmm. I can I the first Thank you. Because the Andahar twins, I feel like I think of them as a band now. I'm like the Andahar twins. But production designers Courtney and Hillary Andahar are. They are. And the special effects. Can we talk? <gasps> I am yeah. obsessed with body horror, special oh. effects, gore. My God, A plus all so around on Lisa that work Forst here. Is, Lisa Forst was our special effects prosthetic makeup artist, and she is a wizard. I mean, just everything was incredibly grounded medically and incredibly realistic and yeah, she did an amazing this job. This is a little bit odd because this person might not, but maybe this person will go on to have a career in film, I don't know, but our medical consultant, to say Emily. Emily Ryan, MD, <laughs> we call her Emily Medical. Um, I feel special. like I hope she she was like as much a part for me of this movie as, as the three of you. I mean, and she's extraordinary. She's a Stanford pathologist that took a few months off to basically advise on our film. Um, and she's actually been working on the script with me for years. She's uh, college roommates and best friends with my composer, Ariel Marks, who is the person I was gonna name, who is who is unreal. I've been working with her since, since my movie Friday forever. Um, but she literally built with me, like with my voice, a sound library 
of synths to create the score for the film. I read Did that you know? and my brain cannot compute how how someone comes up with that idea and how it actually works and happens. She actually, yeah, recorded. Will you tell? They don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the I'm the I'm the I'm the orchestra. What? <laughs> yeah. How do, what do you go? I, I, I don't oh understand. Oh my gosh, I'm How'd... so impressed right <laughs> really? now. Really? Yeah, Ariel is amazing. So took over. Yeah. Oh we no, wanted, please. We I'm wanted to by this. Um, create some really unique synth sounds, and we couldn't quite find in, in libraries, existing libraries, what we wanted. So she actually recorded me, my mother, um, a three-year-old, the daughter of our sound mixer, Joe Riglieri. Uh, who didn't who didn't quite make it in, but we we were experimenting and with all kinds Emily of things. Emily said, are you also at some point in the soundtrack like reading something about preeclampsia? Oh, I then we tried that. I don't <laughs> think that made that. I, don't, I, didn't I was like that. a, that's incredible. Yeah. No, and the and the and the sound was uh, gripping. And it, that's the kind of thing that sound things like sound and music sneak in or they stick out. And it and, and it does both, you know? And you remember it. And it's powerful. I have to wind down with you guys soon. I'm going to try to squeeze in two more questions Nobody's here. Nobody's as fun as we are. I, want, I would happily keep you here forever if I was allowed. Someone will yell at me behind the camera. Bringing up the idea of working with a medical specialist for uh, so many years, I'm curious, what is something about her expertise that changed something in the script in a way that surprised you? Something that you didn't realize was going to be like the truth of our reality, but she corrected it and now we could see in the film. Well, I mean, so much. And I was I actually wanted a, like an hour long tutoring session from Emily before the press day, which I didn't get, which was like, remind me of all the medical <laughs> things. Um, but I mean, uh, the uh, Rose developing her her life giving serum from stem cells uh, is absolutely rooted in, in regenerative medicine trends today. Um, I definitely wrote the line. Rose has a complicated serum apparatus on her windowsill and was like, Someone will figure that out. <laughs> and it was amazing because actually the Andahar twins and Emily Medical um, not only That sounds designed, like a band. I know, right? I, know, right? I like that. That's a band. Um, not only designed this incredible apparatus, but it, it like works. I mean, you know, she was just like describing to me the functionality of how things are distilled and, and, and changed throughout that process. Um, and so, yeah, I think that was mind blowing to me that that they yeah, could make Emily that real. Discovered the cure for death. In the <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a really funny thing. But you know, there was a scene when I'm like looking the microscope and, and looking at a thing, and I was like, what else would I be? Should I be writing something down, Emily? Like, I don't know what people do. Would I be typing it? Right? She was like, well, what you're doing, I would just be making like hash marks. And I was like. I can totally do that convincingly. <laughs> I know how to do that. And that was the thing where I was like, just hash marks? Is that scientific at all? That sounds crazy. Yeah, that's a silly thing though, but I was like, my mind is blown. All right, you bringing up a silly thing gives me an excuse to ask my last question. This is very silly, it might crash and burn, but just for fun, all four of you, real you, not your character, you are forced to reanimate someone or something. You can't raise that monster by yourself. Who in your life do you team up with to co-parent your Frankenstein's monster? I could, I could do this pretty quickly because it would be my co-writer, uh, Brendan O'Brien. Um, we, we pretty much did it together. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a long history together. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a boring answer, but it's, it's my answer. My first thought was my my best friend since I was a child, but then actually, as soon as you moved on further, I was like, it's gotta be Judy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I trust you in scary situations yeah. with weird children. Yeah. Not that AJ was weird, I'm talking about the character. Um, uh, I'm going to, re I would reanimate my, my dog, just like we reanimated the pig, and I would use my kid because, you know, they'd be all down, you know? They'd be like, "Yeah, let's do it. I mean, Can I'm we do it like they did it in the movie?" <laughs> yeah, watch they would. Watch a whole movie about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, and it's a whole family. Yeah. Family. It's birth, birth rebirth. The series, yeah. <laughs> limited series, because we're too cool for that. Birth, birth rebirth, births, rebirths. <laughs> I'm into that. Yeah, just to say sorry or whatever. Just say no. <laughs> sorry. Just say no. That'd be cool. It'd be like the ghost. I'm too yeah. fancy for the family. Yeah, the ghost. <laughs> the, the, the. Sorry. So who would you who, who would you, you, get, you got a lot of who would you reanimate? Oh, um, I mean, this is like so obvious, but who would I reanimate? Yeah. Oh, I didn't pose that question, I but know, if I they want to know the answer, I'm fine with it. Answer. 
I'm like, like I can't even. I don't even if I know if I can. Oh really? Oh. No, I mean, I w probably wouldn't reanimate a pet. I feel like the question of the reanimation is like a morality question that I would probably never. I'm like, you have to let the sleeping pigs lie. Or this whatever. is why I asked for the partner in crime instead. <laughs> I know. Partner in crime I'm like, I feel like a huge part of the movie is like, death comes for you, and maybe it should. It's a really creepy thing about the film. That's the rebirth part. We say why. Yeah. Like but, who, but who would what? you? But what? Oh. If, but what if well, like? But what if like me and Judy reanimated things, and then you had to? We were like, you're. It's in, you're in charge. I had a baby in the middle of the pandemic. And my mom and my partner, this is a, such an obvious answer, basically like felt like we already went through some sort of like, um, yeah. like weird sci-fi experience. Like my mom, uh, I think had like, like drove out with like a she wee so she wouldn't stop at, at restrooms. She would just like pee on the side of the road. Like it was like, like stopping at like, I mean, it was like, we are in, World War II bread lines trying to get like vaccines. It, like it was wild. And so I feel like if you really needed to reanimate somebody, the morality question would come with those two. Those are my ride or dies. You kind of you kind of can't separate the two. But I only ask questions that I can come up with an answer to. And I couldn't come up with an answer. Like, would I actually do it? But I know the people I would turn to if it was forced upon me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it back around and ending this interview on a more wholesome note. <laughs> I'm, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Huge congratulations on birth, rebirth. This Thank is you. something else. Thank you. Thank to you. everybody out there, keep an eye out for the movie and for more interviews right here from Sundance.